Hey guys, it's Fred and Sheila McCoy. We're at the Hatfield McCoy Museum, uh, Liberty, Kentucky. You can go to fredmccoy.com for all the information. Um, we were going through some papers down here a while ago, just things that we'd researched and copied and had years ago. And you know, uh, a lot of people talks about the documents or the, mm -hmm. the pictures we have. And, and that's where a lot of our information, our research brought us to that. And we figure we put it on the walls where anybody can see it, but it also makes it easier on us when we want to show something. It's a whole lot easier to find. One, we've got so much anymore, it's a little bit harder because um, hard to locate until you get used to showing it over and over. So you figure out, yeah. Yeah. Sheila knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Anyway, we found a, uh, a letter to whom it may concern. And um, this is from Martha McCoy. And she had... Uh, wrote this in 1934, uh, third day of February, 1934, and this is her statement. It's notarized and all that. And Martha was the wife of Sam McCoy, and Sam, of course, was the son of uh, Randall McCoy. Okay. Sam, for any of you that's ever been to Randall and Sarah and Rosanna's grave in Pikeville mm -hmm. at the Deal Cemetery, mm -hmm. Sam is uh, around to the side of the hill there, a little path. Yeah. And it's got a sign there that says Sam and Martha McCoy. Right. And Martha wrote this statement in 1934, and she says the McCoys have never talked about the Hatfield-McCoy feud. And, you know, that's that's true. That, that's true up to just a, a few years back. Uh, it's just always been the McCoys were always outspoken, outnumbered, mm -hmm. out uh, bullied. Mm -hmm. And they just, it wasn't worth the arguing or the fighting or the fussing. To, so everybody just let uh, the West Virginia Hatfields or the Devil Ants Hatfields say anything they wanted to say. And, right. And that's the way it always went. But Martha says, but now I wish to make a statement. I, being the wife of Sam McCoy and daughter-in-law of Randolph McCoy, know all that happened at the election fight. Now, um... At the election fight, she's talking about, she says, it was Bill, not Randolph Jr., who cut Ellison Hatfield. And, you know, everybody said that for years. Anybody knows anything mm -hmm. about the, the feud? They've always said that they've got the wrong, the wrong boy. boy. Mm -hmm. uh, Wilm, which she's calling him Bill, Bill here. Was another word for we. Exactly. Time. And uh, Wilm's the one that actually stabbed Ellison when he was beating Tolbert with the rock. Uh, Randolph Jr. was completely innocent. He was not even at the scene. He came up to see what was going on after it was over with, and the, the Hatfields grabbed him. And um, and she says that uh, uh, the McCoys, uh, thinking that where Wilm was only 15 years old, that when it come to court, that they would, wouldn't be nothing done with him anyway, where he was so young. William or Randall? Thank you, babe. See how I do that? Uh, that's my lifesaver there. Aww. The other day we yeah, was doing yeah. a video, and it sounds like I'm bawling her out, but don't mistake me, I'm not. I'm no. trying to tell her. Uh, it doesn't she, bother you. Yeah, she had corrected me, and I'm trying to tell her, please correct me anytime. It don't bother me at all. And I was w reviewing the video, and I'm thinking, if people don't know what I was going to say, they'll think I'm chewing you out, but... No, nah, he's not. I promise, guys. I want her to, uh, she's my lifesaver sometimes because a lot of times I put the, the wrong name. Yeah. I, I'm thinking a mile ahead of what I'm going to say next, and sometimes the wrong thing comes yeah, out. Yeah, we talk about Randall. Not So, uh, it was uh, Wilm that mm -hmm. actually stabbed Ellison, and they got Bud. And right. Bud was 15 years old. And um, they, they never made it to trial. She says in here that they never made it to trial, that they uh, tied them to pawpaw bushes and shot them. Now, I'm not going to read this entire statement. It's typed out here. Mm -hmm. We've got it in written form. There is her, her written statement in her oh, own cool. words. Yeah, that's in her I own love words. Stuff like that. And uh, that's a copy of it. Of course, it's on yellow paper. Right. Uh, but there's what it looks like there. But it's typed out here and the bottom's well, put on. Well, you can read it better, so that's okay. And and she goes on to say that once uh, her and Rosanna and Sally, Sarah McCoy Randall's wife, her, her mother-in-law, mm -hmm. along with the kids, were at the cabin. And there was 15 
uh, yeah. raiders. Mm -hmm. She calls them raiders, desperados, whatever you want to call them. A bunch of the Hatfields from West Virginia had uh, come across the river uh, looking for Randall and a bunch of them. And uh, she said that her and Rosanna went up in the attic of the house, the loft, and they're picking out some cracks in the uh, wall mm -hmm. to count how many there was. And she said there was 15. Wow. And she said that her and Rosanna got scared <laughs> and there was some loose boards up there and they fell. And when they fell, they hit those loose boards and knocked them down. Mm -hmm. And I guess they thought they had a Gatling gun or something. But her <laughs> words are that uh, um, uh, Rosanna and I went to the loft and count the raiders in the out the port hose. We counted 15 raiders and it scared us so that we stumbled over some loose lumber in the loft. It fell making a terrible noise. <laughs> the Hatfields began, pan, became panic stricken. Yeah. Got on their horses and fled. My mother-in-law laughed at our fears for she didn't believe the Hatfields would harm women and children. Now that was Sarah. That's Sarah McCoy. That, That's, you know, Sarah was the one wow. that held Randall back for years. We've always said that. Yeah. She always held Randall back. She was a Christian, good woman. And, um, she wouldn't let them do anything. And I'm going to read you another one in a minute. The reason Randall didn't do anything uh, mm -hmm. uh, to give you a hint on that. So you'll know but why. But yeah. Sarah didn't believe. She believed good in everybody. And she good. didn't believe the Hatfields would ever hurt children or women. So she she didn't fear them in that respect. Yeah. Well, in the end, they killed two more of her children. And they uh, beat her half to death. Oh. So, uh, so much for that. So much for Mr. William Keith Hatfield saying that Sally was their friend. So much for, um, uh, you know, all that mm -hmm. stuff that's been printed and spoken in the history that was nothing more than garbage. Here's what you pay attention to. These are statements from back in that day. Yeah. And that's, that's what I you want to pay attention to and, and firsthand <clears throat> knowledge. Um... And then she says, Sally and the other survivors tell that Cap Hatfield killed Alifair. And Jim McCoy beat Sally almost to death. Wow. Um, then they moved from Blackberry to Pipewell. But the McCoys invaded West Virginia, and they captured several of the Hatfields and brought them back to Pipewell to stand trial. And, you know, that's what a lot of people don't understand. Why all of a sudden did, did Randall take off after the Hatfields? Why all of a sudden? Well, they done killed three of their children, and Wilma yeah. died. They killed two more and burnt the cabin down and beat yeah. Sally half to death. And I, I, Sally finally says, she, this ain't her words, this would be mine, but if that was me, I would say, kill them all and mm -hmm. let God sort them out. Yeah. That's what I would say. I don't think Sally's probably put it in those words, no. but I think Sally turned Randall loose. After she's almost killed, her home's burnt, mm -hmm. two more children's dead, I think Sally's mm -hmm. probably told um, him to, uh, to go ahead and and get to seek justice. Eye for an eye. Eye for an eye. Good way to put it. I think that's what she finally did. I think after yeah. she turned Randall loose, Randall, you know, Bless again, your they say Randall didn't lead Randall. Well, yeah, Randall laid. He's in the uh, the warrant uh, from West Virginia where the governor signed a warrant on him mm -hmm. uh, for coming over into West Virginia. He's right there on it. So uh, once Sally said it was okay, uh, he, he went. Yeah. Sam told me about the Battle of Grapevine, Jim Vance's death, and what happened. And uh, Jim McCoy was a deputy sheriff, uh, Sam's brother. Bud McCoy, um, Asa Harmon's son, the one that had that rifle we've got on the other side in there, mm -hmm. he had borrowed Jacob's rifle uh, to go with the posse that day. And he was the only one that was wounded that day, but said he went on. Uh, Bud McCoy Harmon's son was the only McCoy wounded at Grapevine. Wow. Cap Hatfield and Jim Vance hit out together. And then when they spotted him, they spotted Jim Vance and told him to surrender. And uh, he fought and they killed Jim Vance. And Cap ran off, leaving his overcoat and cap. Sam, her husband, she's talking mm -hmm. about Sam, brought the overcoat home with him and wore it off into Pottwell that winter. He used <laughs> to send word to Cap, come and get it. He sent word to Cap Hatfield to come and get his coat and his hat when he wanted it. Of course, by then, Cap's probably out west hiding anyway. But Right. And, and there's more to this statement, and um, I'll get Sheila to uh, 
post it on the um, end of her video. Okay. And uh, sometimes she can do it, sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't. So yeah, when I say that, if you don't see something at the end, that just means it didn't come it through. It didn't work out the way we wanted, yeah. these documents, everything that we cover in here mm -hmm. on these videos, these documents are on these walls somewhere. Okay. So if, uh, other than that, it's Fred and Sheila McCoy. And uh, yeah, you can skim over this case. Yeah. Uh, here's those three pins that's in my back. I had my gun in my belt. When I was arresting a guy, I mean, him went to the ground, Ooh. fell back on my gun, and that's that crack at the top. And yeah, that's the three that. pins going from my hip over into my backbone. Wow. And um, so that's that's my back. Yeah. There's without the beard and stuff. And there's with the uh, Houstonville Police Department where I retired from the last, where I retired. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, but I worked for several departments over the last 40 years. Uh, there's a baby book. My mother, she always made all of us baby books when we were <laughs> first born. There's my weight and all that. Everything will be in there as a baby. Of course, there's the McCoy story. Of course, there's a picture when I was in the Marine Corps. We probably covered some of this mm, before. We've seen it. But yeah. that's when I was 17, 18 years old and reading Trudy McCoy's book. Mm -hmm. Now, down here, has anybody else got <laughs> snookered or scammed with the um, Iraqi dinars? <laughs> During the Iraqi war, after it was over with, everybody thought the Iraqi dinars was going to revalue mm -hmm. like they did in uh, Kuwait after yep. that war. And uh, they didn't. Nope. And a lot of people bought up a lot of Iraqi money because it was supposed to be about three or four times worth what it is. We got a couple of million dollars there. We'd probably be living Rich. good if, if we was in Iraq. <laughs> But there's a couple million dollars there of Iraqi money. Mm -hmm. uh, there's when I was undercover, when I worked undercover there. There's where myself and uh, Detective Hatfield were, were promoted to detectives. That's a newspaper article. Mm -hmm. um, that's the name thing off my desk. I was far, far chief at one time, uh, police chief. Here's a picture of Randall McCoy when he was in court in Louisville. That's when he escorted the guys Somebody said, when did he ever lead anybody anywhere? Well, there he is when he led the, the nine prisoners to Louisville to stand trial. Mm -hmm. So he led them there. Here's my grandma and grandpa, uh, Philip and Ella Jane McCoy. Boy, so that concludes this video. It's Fred and Sheila McCoy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. Hope you're having a great morning. It's raining here in Icky. Please like, subscribe, and share. Catch you on the next one. Bye. Stop. <laughs>